eight travelers, eight different journeys to go on, and I can pass traveler. Who are you gonna play as? Let's find out. Here we go. Switch, and there are eight different characters for us to play as in this game. So, who are we gonna be playing as? Which character are we gonna choose to go on this adventure and experience this world with? So, there's eight different characters in this game, each with their own compelling stories, and they each begin their journey on opposite ends of the world. They each have a different class and combat abilities for you to experience as, though regardless of who you start with, you can get all eight playable characters to join your party so you can experience each one of their stories in a single playthrough. So that right there is awesome. So what I want to know is, which character fits my playstyle the best? Who am I going to start with? Who are you going to start with? Are you going to pick a character who's really strong and powerful? Or are you going to pick some someone with a lot of magic abilities and area of attacks? Or will you pick someone with a very compelling background and in-depth story? Someone that maybe fit your playstyle? Or will you pick someone who's just cool looking? Do you like the character sprite? So today in this video, I'm just going to quickly talk about each one of the different characters, about their combat abilities, each one of their playstyles, how they fare in this game. That's what we want to know. Are they going to be right for your playstyle? Let's find out. So bear with me for a little bit. I might sound kind of nasally. I am sick this week. Go figure. Dead of summer, it's like 100 degree temperatures outside and I have a head cold. How does that even happen? I've been sneezing and sniffling all day and it's a gross mess. So if I happen to sneeze during this episode, well, it might happen. But regardless of my sickness this week, I had to film. I wanted to talk about this game because it's coming and I'm excited for it. I hope you're excited for it as much as I am, you know. I'm trying to get as much Octopath Traveler information as I can and I want to be as knowledgeable as possible going into this game and I know you're like me, so here we go. So each one of the eight characters that we have, we have Cyrus the Scholar, Tressor the Merchant, Old Beric the Warrior, Primrose the Dancer, Alfin the Apothecary, Therian the Thief, and Haniant the Hunter. I'm not really too sure how to pronounce that name. Haniant, Haniant, H, apostrophe, A, well, well, here we go. So starting off, we have Ophelia the Cleric. As Ophelia, you hail from snow-swept Frostlands, where you dutifully serve the Order of the Flame under your adoptive father, the Archbishop. As your adoptive sister and best friend prepares to embark on a pearliest pilgrimage, you stand ever at at her side, but unbeknownst to both of you, events are about to take a turn of tragicness. So clerics mostly support allies through healing magic, but has some damaging light magic as well. So Ophelia, she can heal wounds, she has the power of holy light, a sheltering veil, luminescence, you can heal everybody at once, you have a reflective veil and revive. She also has different kinds of supportive skills, so she's basically your healer and your support for the group, where if someone's gonna go down, well, you need your cleric to revive them. So Cyrus the Scholar, you teach at a royal academy in Altestam. Though you have numerous admirers, your only true passion is the pursuit of knowledge. As a scholar, you use elemental magic to hit all enemies at once. So as a scholar, you'll get area of attack ability, so you can hit all the enemies all at once. So that's a pretty powerful ability right there. You have different skills, such as Fireball, which will do fire damage to all your foes. You have Ice Wind, which is going to deal ice. You have Firestorm, a Blizzard, Lightning Blast. You have Analyze, which will reveal HP and a weakness of a single foe in battle, which that right there I've always liked. You know, I've always called it Scan. You know, oh, let me scan that enemy because, you know, maybe I might get that from Fantasy Star from all the way back on the Sega Genesis and Sega Master System, but, you know, scanning and analyzing your foes so you just know their weaknesses is a good ability to have, just to have insider knowledge on them. Next, we have Tressa the Merchant. 
As a merchant, you stock the shelves at your parents' shop in your sleepy seaside hometown. Yet you often find yourself gazing out at the sea, longing for something more. What lies beyond the horizon? You thought you'd never know the answer. Then, one day, an unfamiliar vessel's ways anchor at the docks, changing your life forever. Merchants are all about money and adventure and will help you become rich and acquire otherwise unavailable items. So Teresa can collect money from your enemy foes. She has the power of trade winds, which deals heavy wind damage to a single foe. She has the power of rest to restore her own HP and SP. She has the power of trade Tempest, which deals wind damage to foes. Donate BP, which you grant an extra BP to an ally. She has a skill called Sidestep, which is really cool because she can dodge a single physical attack with a 100% success rate, which that is really cool that you can sidestep out of the way. And also Hired Help, where you pay money to summon Hired Help to the battlefield. That right there is really interesting. She's a really cool concept of a character where she's basically just out for the adventure and seeking treasure and money. She can hire actual other companions come and fight the battle for you. That's a really interesting game mechanic. I haven't seen much games like that, so I am kind of interested in her. She might be one of my first uh, party members that I'm going to be playing as, so we'll see. Next we have Oberic the Warrior. As a warrior, once a proud knight, you lost both king and kingdom in a bloody coup of day. You serve as a master at arms for a remote mountain village. To what end do I swing my blade? The question tortured you night after restless night. Then then, one day, you overhear a name from your past, giving you new purpose. So warriors are protectors who attract enemies' attentions toward them. They are also quite adept at breaking their foes' defenses. They have a level slash sword attack, which attacks all foes with a sword. They can abide to increase the user's physical attack strength for three turns. Spearhead, which is a polearm attack for a single foe with a polearm, and act earlier on your next turn. Insight, to become more readily targeted by foes for three turns. Cross Strike, unleashing a sword attack on a single foe. Stout Wall, which increases the user's physical defense for another three turns. Thousand Spears, which attacks random foes with a polearm five to ten times. And Brand's Thunder, which is the divine skill, unleashing a tremendously powerful sword attack on a single foe. So he's basically your strong character where he's gonna be up front and center, he's gonna be taking all the brute force of all the enemy attacks, and will be dealing the most damage. So if you're looking for a powerhouse of a character, Oberic the Warrior is who you should play as. <laughs> then we have Primrose the Dancer, who applies her trade in the pleasure district of Sunshade Town that's forever shouted in darkness. In truth, you are the highborn daughter of the once proud house Azelheart, an identity you conceal from all. Three men bearing the mark of the crow, they took your father from you, but you will have your revenge. So dancers use dark magic attacks and supportive dances to raise their team stats. Some of her skills are the Lion Dance, which allows a ally's physical attacks to become more powerful for, for two turns. Moonlight Waltz, which is a dark attack dealing heavy dark damage to a single foe. Peacock Strut, which is another dance move, augment on a single ally's elemental attacks for two turns. Mole Dance, which is another augment for a single ally physical defense for two turns. Night Ode, which is an attack for dark damage against enemy foes. The Panther Dance, which increases a single ally's speed for two turns. Bewildering Grace, causing a curious effect to occur one time. And a Divine Skill of Seduction, for three turn skill performed by a single ally that usually targets one foe will affect all foes instead. So she seems kind of a supporter role. I mean, she did a lot of weird dances going on. I am interested in playing as her. She, she just had this interesting backstory, kind of a darker backstory going on to her. And the way that her combat is in battle really intrigues me. It's just something a little bit different. Something that I normally wouldn't play as. So I am intrigued as Primrose. She is on my list, so I'm gonna check her out. Next we have Alfin the Apothecary. You treat the wounded and sick in a small village amid the babbling brooks of the Riverlands. Stricken ill as a child, you were saved by a traveler who asked for nothing in return, inspiring you to follow in his footsteps. Though hesitant to leave, 
maybe the only home you've known, your best friend convinces you to follow your dream, whatever it may lead to. So apothecaries use ingredients to help support their teammates and have some ice elemental damage as well. Some of your skills consist of first aid, you have an icicle attack, you have a rehabilitate, amputation which unleashes an axe attack on foes, you can poison your enemies for turns, you can revive your fallen companions, you have a last stand which attacks all foes with an axe, dealing damage inversely proportional to your current HP, and the divine skill daughter's charity which for three turns items used by a single chosen ally will affect all allies. So again, he's kind of a supporter role, although he does have a few heavy hitting attacks. A lot of the characters seem like they do have kind of a universal supportive role. They each can heal quite a bit and revive characters, but also allowing to release heavy combat damage to foes. So I do like that, because I always want my main character to do heavy damage, but also have at least a little bit of a healing power because it, I need that healer in my group. So he is somebody that you should probably think about. Next we have Therion the Thief. While your past is a guarded secret, your exploits are known far and wide. Mere whispers of your extravagant heist strike fear into the hearts of the wealthy. Drifting into the cliff lands one day, you hear a rumor of great riches to be had. You set your sights on a mansion said to be impregnable, only to find what you never expected. <laughs> so as Therion the Thief, you are quick and use physical attacks, or can weaken enemies with their skills. You can steal items from foes, you have a wildfire attack which deals heavy damage to your enemies. You have a skill called HP Thief, which is a dagger attack to a single foe twice with that dagger and steal his HP equivalent to half of the damage dealt. You can shackle foe, which reduces a single foe's physical attack strength for two turns. Armor Corrosive, which reduces the foe's attack defense for two turns. You can steal your enemy's SP. You can share your SP with your allies and your divine skill, Aber's Reckoning, which attacks all foes with your dagger, dealing damage proportional to your speed. Therion the Thief actually sounds kind of interesting. He has a compelling backstory. This is somebody that, you know, it's really tough to decide who you want to play with. I'm really not too sure. I'm very undecisive. You know, I'm liking Therion a lot. A lot of his movesets really intrigue me. They spark my interest. I want to play as him, so luckily, eventually, you will be able to experience each one of the characters' stories and all the characters, so that's the plus. Then lastly, we have Hainet the Explorer. She is a very beautiful character. She's on my top of the list to play as. Hainet the Hunter is one of the last descendants of an ancient clan that calls a deep forest home. Your prowess with the bow is unmatched. Your master left home one year ago summoned to hunt a dread beast. And you protected the village while awaiting his return. Then one day, the return of an old friend gives you cause for concern, and you strike out on a journey of your own. As a hunter, you use mostly physical attacks with a combination of axes and bows. You have skills such as Rain of Arrows, which will attack random foes five to eight times with your bow. You have True Strike, which deals critical damage to a single foe with your bow. Thunderbird, which is a lightning attack dealing heavy lightning damage to a foe. Leghold Trap, which delays an enemy attack for two turns. You have a Mercy Strike, which is a lethal attack leaving your enemy target with only one HP. Arrow Storm, which attacks all enemies for five to eight times in a row. Take Aim, which increases all allies critical rate and accuracy for two turns. And your divine skill, Dreyfendi's Rain which you unleash a highly powerful bow attack against all foes. So that is all eight characters, each with their own unique playstyle, combat abilities, and story to progress through. It's a very difficult decision. Who are you going to choose? I'm not quite too sure how I'm going with. I believe, you know, I really like Haina at the end. She's an interesting character. She is beautiful. I love that she's got that range attack. I've always been kind of good with range. Well, you know what? I'm not really too sure. I can't decide. There's too many to pick from. I think the top three that I most want to play as is Hannah the Hunter, Therion the Thief, and Primrose the Dancer. <laughs> so let me know who you're going to play as, which character are you most excited to go on an adventure with. And again, sorry that I'm a little bit under the weather. I was probably pretty nasally in this episode, but you know, hey. 
Again, I wanted to get an episode out for you guys to watch. You know, it's something that I just enjoy. I do this for fun and for myself and for you guys mostly to watch something. And I'm excited that each one of you are here. Each one of you that are subscribing. I'm very close to hitting a small mile marker. I'm working on 200 subscribers. I know that's not a lot. People can get that in like an hour, but hey, you know what? That makes me happy that I am hitting 200 subscribers. That's a big deal for me because this is just something I do for fun. You know, I'm a weird, sporadic kind of guy. I'm just amazed that you're even watching and listening to what I have to say because I'm going to talk about things that I enjoy, things that I like, and that might be of interest to you. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Roman Playhouse. And we'll see you again for another episode. We'll see you then. Bye. Oh!